So you want to have fog lights on your Volvo Amazon. Uh, David here with another quick tech tip video. Uh, I just finished wiring the Marshalls on Genevieve. That's the 67 Amazon wagon here. And I'm going to walk you through what I did and a couple of different ways you can wire your lights in. All right. So this it actually looks like the same car. Uh, Volvo Amazon pictures.se. They have these wonderful tech articles. Uh, I use the same one. I use one of their other articles for the overdrive. I just type in overdrive into Volvo Amazon and you have here auxiliary lights in Volvo Amazon. They talk about the different ways you can wire it. Uh, but actually, they only give you one way and that's the four terminal relay. The original relays were three terminal and the four terminal is so that you can have, as this customer wants, a California or I guess 50 state legal car for the wiring. And by that, I mean, you can have the fog lights turn on only with the headlights, you can't just trigger them uh, on their own. So you have to have the headlights on. And then when you turn the high beams on, it disables the fog lights. And the reason why the three terminal relay doesn't work is because it's a little too simple. And it doesn't know that there's another circuit that closes the second or uh, I'm not going to explain this well. It's midnight and I'm a little tired, but I'm going to show you. Let's just hop under or maybe we'll start here actually at the relays. Um, you know, these cars originally have indents and someone's already drilled these you can see the indent for the one above it I think right there under the paint uh, that might not be one of them but um, you know Bruce had two he, that's my 62 Volvo and he's actually running this kind of relay and that's because I want to cheat the system be illegal and basically run my fog lights at any time so I can leave them on at cars and coffee because I like it to be a non-stop disco bet you it's Nabisco bet you didn't know but this relay here has three terminals 3051 on the front 87 on the right 85 on the left as you're staring at it from here they're still available new from VP Auto Parts the part number comes in a Volvo box 669102 the article talks about the different part numbers as well and this is our wiring diagram for it uh, supply from battery goes right into the middle the uh, what is that handwriting get through oh ground through switch okay and then uh, fogs power okay so this would be the output to the fog lights the battery power and then the ground switch very simple they use these relays for the reverse and for the headlights and I was trying to figure out how to get this to have signal from the headlights so that it really only turns on with the three prong. It's just not possible. The four prong relay, I will start here by saying these are the wires for it. I need to do a little final zip tying and cleaning up to hide them, but I can show you now the two whites that are in there. Uh, those are the only ones sticking out. The rest of the wiring is under the dash, which we'll head there now. Under the dashboard, I know I've got the key on. The relay is hiding right there above the clutch pedal because there was a bolt already existing and this way I didn't have to drill any holes. And from that, I'll be able to produce the... This is actually a very common kit that comes with its own fuse. This is a 30 amp fuse, right? I should probably lower that to maybe like a 15 or something. Uh, that's way too much amperage, but you know, it's also linked to the ignition. So from the relay here, there's really only four wires for the four terminals. You've got power, the red, black, ground, two whites. One white is going to be the output to the fog lights. The other one is going to be the trigger signal wire. So what it's basically doing is it's not taking, it's giving the battery voltage to the lights but it's getting the signal to close the circuit when the switch is activated one those are that's you know there are two things that need to happen for the the signal to hit the fogs the switch needs to be activated which is in this case just interrupter switch on the ground and the second thing that needs to happen is the headlights need to be on so those are the, the two parts of the circuit which activates the coil in the relay and then the other one just lets the current pass through from battery voltage all the way to the lights I hope that makes sense very common relay style. Now here, you see all, there's a hole on the left side which is available for the map switch. A lot of these cars, left-hand drive, right-hand drive, um, I don't know if that's the reason why the hole exists on both sides, but a lot of them have it there. Uh, the other thing that already fits, this is a half-inch hole for the switch. The switch I'm using here is an overdrive switch from the P1800s, also sold as a fog light switch, and I like that. Real cool and it's got a nice feeling to it. I had to make a bracket for it, and the bracket 
as we'll turn around and go under the dash. The bracket has to have a bend in it. Okay, here's the back side of the switch and there's the bracket. You see the screw that holds it in place and then the bracket is affixed by the lip in the dashboard. If that lip in the dashboard wasn't there, I could just put a straight tab. I also didn't want to drill a hole, so I just used an existing screw hole there. Now there exists a half inch hole already, right about here. It's unfortunately between the screw holes on this lower dash pad. If this lower knee pad wasn't in place, I would just mount that switch into this hole. And that's the way I did it in Bruce. So this switch with its fancy little bracket, all custom made, the terminals are out of the way, they're not touching anything. It does get close to the wiring if you're mounting it here. You'll see on the back backside, uh, this is the uh, windshield wiper motor. And then this is the light switch on the back. And while you're here, do check that light bulb and the other side over there. Make sure you've got two watt bulbs, not four watt, because four watts will melt the green lenses in your gauge cluster if they haven't already. All right, so here's a better view of the relay. Boy, this whole car, everything, I just, it's like practically new under here. Oof, it was a lot of work. Uh, still continues to be. So, um, I've decided on pulling it toward you to activate it the same way that you would pull the light switch toward you, pull the choke, the wiper motor switch, all those things. So that's that. The switch is available through VP Auto Parts. It has a really nice detent to it, but listen to the relay. Cool, instantaneous. Now the power to the relay goes under the firewall blankie right up here, and then I routed it around the steering column Ooh, it looks kind of daunting back here. It is now the like fourth wire going to the ignition. We've got the radio, the big fat one that goes up to the fuse panel, and the cigarette lighter. So that's the, all four there. Now, I think that's all I have to show under here. Uh, there's no indicator light for having the fogs on. You will just sort of know that they're on because you see them that way. And is there a light on you? Oh yeah, there's a fancy Bluetooth on that radio. Okay. So with the key on, voila. I haven't aimed them yet, but it's kind of funny that they're both the same level. They're slightly below the headlights. I think you're supposed to have them at or below just a little bit, and I'll do a final adjustment as the car is level. But there we have them, these really nice Marshalls. These are the 660s, and I'll show you now the wiring again as it goes here. Uh, this relay, I'm going to end up putting it here because inevitably the prongs will wiggle and um, it's intermittent. So I'm getting intermittent high beam functionality. Oh, speaking of, that is the other trick. As you do high beams, the fogs should disable. That's the whole point. And they're back. Okay. I mean, if you don't want the fogs, then you don't want the fogs. If you want just the flasher, you pull the stock. And if your relay is working, you can see how mine's a little slow, but it's working. Um, yeah, I gotta replace that. Now, let's go turn these babies on and let's look underneath. Okay, the wiring, um, the two whites, one of them goes to the gray wire. That's the important thing. If you want your trigger, this is where you can find it or you find it underneath the kick switch Mm, the kick panel switch, which is uh, the foot dip switch, that's what it's called. I've just connected it here to number four because it was easier to get access that way. And I didn't want to pull back uh, the carpet and, and have to splice in the wire over there. But that is probably an easier method for you if you've got carpet that's easily removable. So um, it's that gray wire. You can't go to the relay for the headlights because that gray wire just goes over to something else entirely. And if you connect to the reds, then your fog lights will turn on with the high beams only. So the power cycles between the grays and the reds, between uh, low beam, high beam, low beam, high beam. So underneath, now the very last thing, regrettably, yes, this has a uh, junction here because the wiring that came in the kit was a little uh, lacking in length, but you know, with the relay and everything else, it's, it's all in place. So I'm not terribly upset about one splice there. I've also got a bad habit of doing service lengths on everything. So, you know, it doesn't actually look that pretty under here, but it's waterproof and that's what counts. 
Um, so yeah, there's a lot of extra length on this wire. I've taken the zip ties that have um, the holes on them there, and those can go into the screws right there. And then all that stuff connects to the Marshalls. The Marshalls ground through the brackets. The brackets came with a kit that was the L bracket or whatever it's called that shape. And um, they actually are supposed to clear a little bit here, but they are sort of too tall and they could be spaced up actually, or the bracket bent up, which is a little difficult. But they did also come with a, ban not a banjo bolt, um, a carriage bolt for the bumper because if you try these, well, you can see it's too big. All right, I'm running out of steam. It's well past midnight and everything works. There's actually a uh, spade terminal or a spade connector in here. You can kind of make out the shape because I do want these to be disconnectable, but that will require that you do cut around it so that you can, you know, get rid of the waterproof seal essentially, which is that three inch <laughs> heat shrink. Whew. That's a lot of information, but you know, I hope it helps if you're hoping to get fog lights wired on your Volvo Amazon. These are such cool lights. Really nice pattern on them. Okay, one more thing, and that is the wiring kit that I used. Like I said, very common. Ooh, sorry, that's too bright. Okay, uh, that's going to be Basically this, it comes with this little round goofy switch and uh, has a connector. I just cut off what I didn't need, which was essentially the blacks going to the fog lights because I um, already have ground on these through the bumper, through the bracket metal. But if you did need black, it, you know, the wire lengths are all the same. And I cut the um, pigtail here because I didn't need a silly power switch and silly might be an understatement. This thing is yeah, absolutely goofy. Yeah. Oh, it feels so bad. It just flexes way too much. Oh, it's creaking. I'm not even doing anything. Yeah, uh, they give you some 3M tape and you know, this little connector here basically, uh, that's the interrupter to the ground circuit and then the red light, uh, the red powers the lights. Um, this is what the relay looks like. The four prongs are in this shape. The more common four prong relay that you'll get from anything is going to have, well, kind of like that, but minus the one in the center, so that makes it a fiver. I can math. There we go. There's a four prong. Very common, generic, plastic, not old, retro looking relays. All right. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope it helps. And remember, Sundays are for hydrocarbons. So go take your old car, drive it somewhere, have fun, take her with it. Life is too short to drive boring cars. And I'll see you guys soon.